لو كنت افتنو ماي نيم از دوي اند اي وود بي مودريتنج ذا سيشن ام ريدي بليز تو هاف يو اول اند تو هاف ريسبكتفل انالستس ويز اس هير سم اوف ذيم اي نو فروم لونج سم بيت شورت بس اي وود ريلي بليز تو ميت ذيم فيري اكسايتنج ستوريز coming from, uh, they sit on the same uh, couch, but maybe they represent different views, and uh, then the, the final seat also may have a different, uh, a different opinion. Uh, someone who's put the agenda, I'm not responsible for the title, they made it sound a little bit controversial. I mean, <laughs> is really VCs are bad? What does this mean and imply? So anyways, I will hope that we make it even a little bit more controversial through this discussion. So to get the gist of it and to get some meat out, maybe we can uh, uh, learn from each other and how to do this. Uh, the, the topic is very timely as well in Egypt and uh, elsewhere in the Middle East and the Arab world because VCs are not very uh, widespread. Uh, we cannot have enough of them, but then there's a lot of love, love, hate, love, I don't know what, relationship between early, early stage investors and later investors uh, who may be uh, VCs. If you add the entrepreneurs into the picture, then the whole thing gets a little bit too messy. And for that, I think I should just start by my uh, uh, panelists and uh, ask them first to each uh, introduce uh, yourself and uh, why you're involved with the sector. And very briefly say your four that uh, VCs are good or bad. And then we can discuss later. Go ahead, Hans. Uh, hi, my name is Hans Lindroth. I'm a Swedish national uh, living in London since a year back. Um, I play in a big part of this investment spectrum. Uh, everything from seed investment, angel investment, uh, venture capital, private equity, and sometimes uh, buyouts as well. So I do investments of my own, but I also work for two very significant families. So hence I get exposed to, to many types of investment forms. Very happy to be here, and I think that this is an excellent event to get together, learn, and network. So, do you want me? You can, yeah, please. But, but I mean, okay, you will, okay. <laughs> okay, hi, hi everyone. Be Pleasure to be here. My, my first time to Techni Summit, by the way, but not the first time in Alexandria, so I'm loving it. Uh, so, my name is Nicola Rohana, I come from Beirut. Uh, and I run presently I Am Capital, which is a VC fund. So you should know if I'm bad or not. Huh? Um, and uh, so it's a special program. I will explain. Uh, maybe I will have time to explain a bit later what, what it is. But we're mostly geared toward early stage investment. So we uh, do matching capital with other investors or angels uh, that are as bad as us. Uh, and uh, we guarantee capital, so we, we, we give insurance to the investor that is uh, investing and this is how we, uh, I mean, uh, encourage angels to invest in, in startups as well. And we do technical assistance and capacity building. Now, in my previous life, before that, I used to run a technology incubator. So, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I mean, I, I come from this sector since 2001, you know, helping out uh, startups and, and entrepreneurs. Via. Hi, very nice to, to be here. I'm coming, I grew up in the U.S., but I've been living the past uh, decade in, uh, in India's uh, Silicon Valley of, of Bangalore. Um, and we've seen the, the whole Earth stage investing ecosystem evolve over the last decade there. And, uh, and, and so I've been an entrepreneur myself, built a business called babajob.com, which, which is the largest blue collar job pacified uh, internet site in India, and uh, we recently, you know, sold that business to a larger company, um, and have, you know, made several angel investments along the way, and we, we raised, you know, three rounds of capital, including from angel investors, venture capitalists, and so strategic, but also wanted to add that perspective to this uh, discussion. Thank you much. Super experience uh, all around. So now to move to the idea of, uh, I mean, sometimes uh, the best way is to be a little bit objective. And sometimes people say objectivity is subjectivity, declared up front. So tell me who you are. 
uh, in that sense. So to go back to the discussion, uh, what do you, kind of value do you, each of you like in terms of even if you have two hats, bring to the venture itself from being uh, from the stage of angel to the stage of VC. So what, what, what is it that, I mean, where, where, where is the value that you bring and what determines if a company should continue or not? Well, I can kind of like the title if VCs are bad or not. And I don't think that VCs are even per design, but I think that it's important to understand where VCs come from. Normally, you get a bunch, usually guys together, that think that they're smarter than other people, and they can raise a bunch of money. So they go out and um, raise the money, and in most cases, the primary objective is that they will make some money. And how they make money is that they make money for their LPs, for their investors. So I think that they will try to optimize their investments so they can make money. And in some cases, that can come in at least short-term conflict with alien investors, with entrepreneurs. So I really think that the question is more, what are the visas bringing to the table? and what do they ask and what they get for what they bring to the table. Can they bring capital? Yeah. Can they bring other things like uh, experience, networks, other investors, help the entrepreneur drive an exit process? If they can do that, I think that they can be very good. In some cases, they look at other ways to optimize their return they can give unfair terms to uh, companies that can hurt alien investors as well as entrepreneurs with various types of preferences when it comes to liquidation, uh, pick interest, etc. So I think that one needs to look at the firm, what they're offering, how they're acting, what they're bringing to the table. So I think some are bad and some are actually very good. Not even by design, by maybe by chance. So, uh, Nicholas, would you make the case that uh, VCs could also be angelic for the change? I mean, I mean, uh, VCs some some call them, you know, instead of venture capital, vulture capital. You know, I, I've heard this term a lot. Uh, but anyway, this love and hate relationship that always exists uh, with VCs, it's it is. I mean, VCs are one of the players in financing a company or a startup, so they have to be there in an ecosystem. Uh, because at some point, uh, maybe no one will ever fund a startup or a company but a VC, because, I mean, it's banks don't give for startups, obviously, because they give out loans, and loans are not, uh, they don't give you loans uh, if you don't have history, I mean, a startup, not a history, so you have to forget about the banks. Uh, you go to competitions and startups, you get a few thousand dollars of grants. Uh, then there is obviously the friends and family that uh, come in to play with somehow a bit m more money. And then the angels, uh, uh, obviously. And then you have the VCs. So, so this, uh, I mean, in, in a company life cycle or in an entrepreneurship ecosystem, a VC has a role to play uh, in, in terms of, of giving and what we call smart money because the, the and this difference between the bank giving you money or a VC giving you money or an investor giving you money is that the bank doesn't care, doesn't have an upside, doesn't care about your business. He wants just, you know, every month you have to pay back the loan. Uh, and uh, whereas the VC, I mean, gives you patient capital. He wants out after a few years. Uh, and he helps you in growing the business because this is his own interest, you know, into coming in and maximizing the value of the, the company so that both the entrepreneur and the VC actually uh, raise, much more, uh, raise much more value and, and you know, you can uh, have uh, a, a bigger stake of, uh, I mean, have more value in the company at the first place. So, so not just uh, give you money, gives smart money and uh, advice because, I mean, he's as much as risk as, as the entrepreneur and he has the normally uh, aligning of, of interest because if, he, if the entrepreneur of the company makes money, the VC makes money. So we have to look at it, I mean, objectively as one of the players in the, uh, in the ecosystem. Now, 
Obviously, when you want to choose a VC, uh, and this is where, I mean, you have to choose wisely. Same for the angel, uh, because, again, the angel gives you smart money and patient capital uh, uh, and advice and, and what have you with the money. You have to know who would bring much more value to the table, uh, open up networks, as has uh, been mentioned. Uh, and, and, you know, it's and, 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 and uh, you have to choose wisely. Uh, the, the VC, because again, as in every ecosystem, you have similar to banks, you have lots of banks, you have to choose the best bank that you can you know, have a good relationship with. Same for the VC, I mean, you have lots of VCs and you have to uh, know how to choose the VC and uh, the, the team and the, there are VCs now that are concentrated on verticals, you know, that have a specialty in like, let's say, FinTech or that have uh, bring value in uh, the mobile uh, space or you know, uh, healthcare or what have you, health tech or ed tech. So it's, it's up to the entrepreneurs here to, to choose wisely the uh, DVC so that they can add, maximize the value and not just, not just about the money as well. I mean, the money is the easiest uh, thing to, to, I mean, it's easy relatively because, I mean, <laughs> I always say uh, money follows ideas and not the other way around. So, I mean, you, you entrepreneurs usually have the upper hand if they have a great idea and they can choose wisely the, uh, the VC. Well, Bill, I hope we caught you in good time. Bill has just yeah. exited a company in uh, India and now uh, seems to be deciding on whether to join the VCs or the angels or maybe to have fun. And that's it. So, <laughs> exactly. which, which direction are you turning yeah. and why? Yeah, no, no, I've thought about it a lot and I think they definitely are they definitely are bad VCs and good VCs, so you really have, as an entrepreneur, you have to do your due diligence, just the same way the investors do on you, you know, you, you should speak to uh, their other investing companies, you know, when we were raising our around, we spoke to uh, four different CEOs of companies that were funded by that investment uh, firm to see what the behavior is, uh, how, you know, how are they, and, you know, they will give their references, but also find people, you know, do, do some research and see uh, situations where deals went bad and how they behave then, because I think that's when you really learn the, the true character of a woman, when things are not going well, right? And that's when their support or they may choose to behave in a, in a different fashion. And so I think um, talking, to, talking to people who work with those venture capitalists and I think even within a VC firm, looking at a particular partner who you were dealing with and their relationship with their partners um, is very important because we, I've seen, you know, there were some venture capitalists where we, you know, a pitch to where we really didn't feel there was a very good team dynamic and uh, there was, you know, a lot, cause a lot of the, some of the larger firms that, you know, have great brands sometimes have very toxic internal relationships which can really hurt, hurt you as a company whether you really aren't going to get the support of the of the firm as you might imagine, and it's really uh, very much uh, there's some negative team dynamics that can that can end up hurting you as an entrepreneur and ending up the company. And so I think you have to uh, doing that deep level of due diligence, talking to as many other entrepreneurs who've dealt with that firm previously is is very very important because people will tell you things one on one that they wouldn't tell in, in public. And so I, I think you have to be very careful also to know. Where in the life cycle is that? Is that is that uh, fun? You know, is this a first-time fund that's you know very desperate to show some exits to raise their second fund? Is this a fund that has ten funds and you know raising the next fund isn't an issue for them? And are you early in that fund cycle? Because a typical venture capital fund is structured as a seven seven-year partnership with a you know, a few-year extension, so it's a maximum of ten-year duration fund, and so most of them have to show some sort of an exit, especially if you're in later of a fund. It could be uh, some little bit of misalignment on, on the timing of that exit can cause a lot of stress. So I think uh, you know, checking all these angles of the, the partner relationships, the how old the fund is, how many funds they have, are they raising a new fund, because that can also divert the attention of the, of, of the partners of the fund, right? They, they, they basically, VCs have to do two things, they have to raise the money and they have to invest it. And, and so they're either looking for new investments or they're helping the existing portfolio companies. And so you're always going to be competing for time of your, even if you have the smartest venture capitalists in the world, how much time is it going to give your company? And so if you're 
let's say, a very small investment for a very big fund, you're probably not going to get much attention of the, of the fund. And so I think, you know, even though it may have an amazing brand name, uh, you actually will not get any FaceTime with the main partners, uh, as you, may, you might get a lot more attention from a smaller fund uh, who's, who really will work hard to help you and that may not have as great uh, a reputation. So I think you have to balance all these factors before you, you know, end up partnering with, with a venture capitalist. And I think if you take all these into account, you may have a better, uh, a better experience than if, if you don't do all your deep, deep homework as an entrepreneur. And that's when you have a bad VC. So Nick, 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 Nicholas and Bill, it's about which fund, which VC fund goes with you. And you have to choose wisely. Uh, some very good funds out there. And if you choose wrong, maybe it's your, it's your issue. Okay, then Hans. I want to ask you, through your investments in almost every continent, from China to India, I don't know, I don't know how many tens of companies you've been invested in. Have you seen a company that got from startup to bootstrap to organic and they never needed a VC fund? Or if you have not used the fund, have you been the, the VC yourself? Well, well, the best way for any company yeah, funding is their sales. Uh, if they can sell, and generate revenue that turns into profit. That's obviously the absolute best of funding. Unfortunately, very few companies can do that. And if they do, we take a very, very long time. So, as we heard before today, I think that angel investors can bring a lot to the table, and in many cases, align interest well with the uh, entrepreneurs starting the company. Uh, all right, we'll do a switch. Words, I think. Okay. So, um, so I think that if the angel network does not have the power or the means to provide funding for companies, especially if it's not a software company, if it's some other type of hardware, it usually requires a lot of funding over time. And therefore, I think that it is very important for angel networks to also build relationships with VCs that can help and provide further funding for a company when those resources are depleted. And I have seen, uh, actually I, I just invested in a small company out of London six months ago and they are now profitable after six months. And I think the reason for that is that they have a very unique offering and it's a B2B solution. So that means that they can do big deals and the sales and marketing efforts are not that great. They can pinpoint their, their customers very easily. Having said that, we are now in discussions of bringing in about 10 million pounds to this company because we need to expand faster and there's some things we want to do. To do. But what is very important is that we show that we can get customers at good margins we in a very, very large market. It's in the travel market. So now we're talking a pre-man evaluation of 50 million pounds of a company that is less than a year old. That's always very unique, but uh, it, it can happen if you have very good entrepreneurs and you are, have a good solution playing in the right space. No, I mean, so now, for, the, uh, uh, for the VCs, they are relatively new to the region and most of their uh, reputation, the one that's being contested, is actually the reputation that they built in the, in the US. So for uh, Nicholas and you are from the region, what lessons or what, what different could VCs that are starting in the region do differently so that they build more uh, rapport and maybe build something uh, that is more uh, regional oriented or uh, more, more in line with the culture? Is there something different or they have to do the VC way, the US way? As you said, it's a relatively new uh, industry. And I, I, can, I can say the example of Lebanon. Uh, I mean, we, we started the first VC fund as part of the incubator in 2008. There was no VC industry, so we sat down with entrepreneurs to see really how they 
because I mean, you don't have an industry, you don't have a benchmark, no investment, etc. So you don't have any, uh, you cannot compare. So we, we sat with entrepreneurs, so it's, it's all in the culture. I mean, uh, it's in the Arab world, uh, it's, uh, you know, we are individualistic, we are family-based, uh, companies are family-based, so opening up capital to outside investors or VCs is like, you know, out of the question. Uh, so, and people thought that investors, you know, are people with cigars, etc. So we really had to, you know, educate uh, people, entrepreneurs about this industry. You know, it's like we're not coming to rip you off, uh, we're here to help, you know, it's smart money, etc. So it was really very tough and we started our first VC fund. Uh, it was six million dollars, you know, uh, to invest in technology startups. You know, six million dollars, like it's, it's a small fund. It's like not even a fund, but we had to start small and to see that this works and to prove that there is appetite and people will actually, uh, when we have the, 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 the supply, that the demand will come. So we had to create this, and this is it was not easy, you know, sitting with entrepreneurs and talking to them one by one in our incubator that you know a VC fund is an alternative way to to get investments. So, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a long process now. In 2013, uh, in Lebanon, so it's like another recent uh, uh, date, uh, the central bank, you know, unleashed overnight, overnight, half a billion dollars, like more than 500 million dollars of money for uh, uh, the, the VC industry, for, for investing in technology startups. And this is because, partly because, I'm not touch claim, is that the success of the very tech fund which we invested in 16 companies with successful exits. So they saw that there is something interesting. And, and so they unleashed, you know, this half a billion dollars. And the model that the Britech fund took at the time was a US based because the laws were not there. I mean, we don't have bankruptcy laws in Lebanon. You know, it's, it's to close a company, it's like really hassle. Uh, so there is no classes of shares, you know, so we had to use the US models and term sheets and shareholder agreements because they were inexistent. You know, and, and lawyers didn't even understand these terms. You know, have to educate lawyers. I mean, we are now in deals because you're a matching fund. Sometimes you have two other VCs and the entrepreneurs. There are like five lawyers in the room and arguing on terms, in, term, <laughs> in clauses in the term sheets that they know nothing of because it's the first time they're closing deals in the VC world. You know, have so, to argue sometimes. So, uh, sometimes. Lawyers have to argue sometimes. So you, uh, uh, yes, I have to justify the pay. Yeah, you're a lawyer, so sorry. <laughs> I just realized that you're a lawyer. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes our lawyer, you know, <laughs> I tell him, stop, because I know I'm going to pay you anyway, so stop, you know, arguing every term in the term sheet. I mean, let's get this thing signed and, and move on with it, you know. So closing these, like, take three months sometimes, you know, and the entrepreneur needs the cash. You know, and, and so before I left, I had to sign a transfer of, uh, to a release of transfer entrepreneur because, because if I do a check, it will take three extra days to, uh, I mean, if I do a check, it takes three or four, five days to cash in the check, whereas the transfer is two days. You know, so we would think about stuff like that in, in, in Lebanon only. You know, so I can go on for, for more than that, but I'll, I'll stop here. So uh, now you raised a couple of uh, good points, actually. Uh, uh, does the government play a role also in, uh, in the VC funding to stimulate VC funding? Are you with this idea? But, or I mean, no. Funds uh, of funds? Gov government, I mean, uh, our government, as you know, has <laughs> its priorities elsewhere. You know, look, not looking at the private sector. You know, so this is every, all the initiatives that we're doing are coming from private sectors, private initiatives. So thank God for that. So, but we need the government, we need the laws to pass, you know, we have to change archaic laws which are not uh, VC friendly nor entrepreneurs friendly, as I said, you know, closing up companies, etc. You know, and having several types of companies, several types of shares, you know, uh, protective measures, etc., etc., you know, so, uh, and, and the courts are not prepared for that, you know, so we have, there is a lobby that we're doing now, so we, we are writing laws, we are funding uh, cabinets, lawyer cabinets to write, PEVC laws that don't exist in Lebanon, employee stock option laws that don't exist. I mean, we do ESOP plans, it's against the law. Honestly, we, it's against the law in Lebanon to do an ESOP plan in the term sheet. I mean, if you go to court, that doesn't stand. But we do it anyways because, I mean, this is, needs to be done, you know. So, so yes, we need government, yes, we need infrastructure, you know, a, a legal infrastructure at, a, at, at the least. Apologize on behalf of lawyers if they have impeded the sector. <laughs> okay, weird. Yeah, no, I mean, I think uh, the government role is, you know, it's, uh, it's, 
important. It's also important, I think, sometimes for the government to stay out of the way with startups. If they're trying to do too much, it can, but I think having clear laws on bankruptcy and things like that are very important for, for startups. It's what happens when a business fails, right? I mean, you have to have an orderly way. And I think until now in India, for example, it took you many years to shut down a business. And I think they're, they're, they've done things now to help uh, speed that up. But, uh, and, I, and I think in terms of them supporting startups, we've seen now a big push. Because I think uh, also, also culturally, it wasn't acceptable to many people to do a startup uh, in, in India for a long time. So it was very difficult to, to recruit people to your startup. And so I think the, 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 the last few years, the government has been very supportive. And I think it, it has helped. Uh, you know, we have, we have lost a lot of early employees early on because they, you know, they, their family said, oh, you have to work in an MNC, and, um, and, and so, but now when the, when the Prime Minister goes on, on TV and says, oh, you know, praises startups and their founders, it, it really helps, I think, uh, you know, younger, um, you know, employees of startups to convince their families that it's where they, you know, want to work. But uh, so I, I think there's a mixed role. I think of, of a government that has to be the right mix of, of support, and, you know. And I think the same thing with the venture capital industry because it create you know bubbles if uh, they put in all this capital that's not properly managed. It can distort the market. So you have to be very careful how much you know the government gets involved. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's also fun. Uh, before we turn it to the floor. Uh, I just uh, want to assure you I also I give a lot of advice and requests and please to the ministers, ministries in Egypt who are responsible, no, who are trying to do something in this space that they should uh, have uh, lawyers more trained on those subjects, especially as well, I mean, not only BC matters, but mostly BC and all, all of the things that go around with it. And because, I mean, they fight about the wrong things sometimes as well. I mean, fighting is, uh, they think that they take it for a sport and maybe they fight for the wrong terms. So that's not always wise. Can, 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 I, can I just be controversial as well? When the not to be controversial. <laughs> and, because I, you reminded me of something. Is, is RBC is bad, but maybe our lawyers bad as well. You know, because I'm, I'm going to be maybe, nasty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you why. <laughs> we don't have only to blame the government. <laughs> it is, but I mean, we, we try to pass, uh, I mean, to ease the, the fact that we can create a business online. You know, and ease the, the, the for startups. You know, you know who's the first lobby that lobbied against this was lawyers. <laughs> you know, it was not even the government. <laughs> it was no, no, no. We have we have the fees. You know, etc. That's what it was like. Huge lobby, and we couldn't even you know pass this. I'm looking to Egypt invest in uh, AI companies that do legal stuff, legal techs, and they've become famous in New York. I tried to put together 10, 15 lawyers who have some good heart in addition to being lawyers and it has not yet uh, taken off but I mean I promise uh, hope, hopefully they would listen soon, sooner than later but uh, but interesting stuff so VCs, uh, uh, governments and lawyers are not uh, your best friends for the evening uh, if we turn it now to the floor and we'd like to see if anyone has questions to the panelists please uh, speak up and if you have comments make them brief if you have questions let's just choose them okay. anyone Yes, Ms. Tantawi. Yes. Okay, good. central bank unleashed you know this overnight so suddenly there's more uh, supply than demand you know so we uh, started to work on creating deal flow you know so we, we invested in an accelerator you know boot camps what have you to because these were unexistent to try to create deal flow for these funds you know to use the, to attract these funds so uh, and and so this was the incentive for for banks to, to go into startups now if we hadn't had this uh, 
I mean, VC or, or central banks circular, because if you go to Lebanon now, the only thing they heard about in the startup ecosystem is circular 331. So if you go and Google circular 331, this is, you know, the, the, the nice theme that everyone talks about for the last two years. Um, but if there wasn't, you know, the circular 331, I think that, I mean, okay, we would have raised capital to take more time, you know, uh, for Baytech Fund 1, we had to raise, it was a $6 million fund raised by, from 19 shareholders, 19. So we had to really do a roadshow, you know, and go and, and raise funds from, uh, we had only five banks, and the rest were, uh, I mean, uh, private companies. Uh, we had Cisco, uh, Cisco Systems, and Intel Capital, you know, multinationals that, uh, that we pitched to and that we got funding from. Uh, and we have got one mobile operator, etc. So you have to really build the case and, and do a tour de table. And I think that, I mean, private companies, if you have a, and, and, and the reason we were able to raise this first fund, and there was really zero funds at the time, is because they knew Baytech, so that we had a brand, we had you know, a track record, and people uh, knew us. So, I mean, when we go and pitch this, uh, I mean, people really take it seriously, and, you know, it's not, they don't just kid you and, you know, that you think either they really sign the check or say no thank you it's not for us you know so um, we would have raised another fund uh, but maybe with much more time than the uh, the VCs now in the circular 331 all the new funds have been created all of the LPs are banks you know so it solves the issue of you know where we get the money from you know so uh, so that's why I said it's more easy because I mean the the banks are not allowed and they have incentives to uh, to go through uh, to go to VCs. Having that been the day 331, we would have like maybe have a mixture of uh, banks and private uh, private sector companies. What questions? And, uh, Comments? Questions? And maybe individual agents as well. To add something. And yeah, I, I agree with the, what was said about government should provide clear rules and regulation on taxation, corporate law, um, incentive, uh, stock offer programs, etc. But I think that's the most important part for the government. But I think that in this region, particularly Egypt, where I spent some time, I think that there's enough track record to show that this is an investment class that actually can provide solid returns. And what I've seen in, in other parts of the world uh, is that prominent families allocate part of their wealth to uh, venture funds, be it internal, or fund something that's external. So I would challenge prominent families that want to make a good return but also promote this type of development in Egypt and the region to come out and, and form these funds and spearhead this as an effort. And, and if, I, if I may, uh, yeah, if I may add to that. Uh, again, I mean, going back to the Circular 31, which unleashed a lot of money, but the problem, the caveat for that uh, is that, you know, now that the, they have created big, big funds, and these funds usually go to later stage financing, you know, so Series A and, you know, so big tickets, one million, million. So there was an equity, equity gap that was created, you know, and so, so you have to be careful, I mean, in, in which, uh, I mean, where you want to play. Is it early stage and is it later stage, etc. And, 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 and you need to have all the ecosystem players uh, in the funding equity, uh, in the funding cycle, if you, if you, if you will. Uh, so, because if you have a gap, you have a problem. Because, I mean, uh, if you have a startup, it will never reach the VC stage. So you have to have, you know, either accelerators or, or, or what have you, or angels for that matter, that will help reach uh, the gap to reach the VC stage as well. You know, so this is what we're trying to do as well now, as part of our mandate, is to create angel groups, angel groups to really bridge, bridge this gap between, you know, a startup that comes up of an accelerator just, and just got like 30K of funding and uh, get like an extra 100K, 200K to, for them to be ready to get like the 500 or, or a million uh, from, from a structured VC. Voilà. So we are really trying to fill these gaps uh, as part of the program. And this is not 331 money. So my fund is, uh, has nothing to do with the central bank's uh, circular, so it's uh, uh, privately run. It's funded by USAID. And we have the liberty to, uh, to create you know, accelerators and, uh, and angel groups to fund this. Uh, and the same thing when we created angel groups, I mean, we've created so far three groups, each between 20 and 26 individuals. So we went one by one to pitch our, our program for them. 
you know, and, and come and join us, and we're going to de-risk our investment. My fund guarantees 50% of their investments. We can even match their investment because uh, our fund is insured, we insure, and we match the capital. You know, so this is a, a, a way of getting extra capital to fund. So now I have, I'm managing three angel groups. Each fund is like half a million dollars, and it's not even our money. So it's people's money that we're managing. And so it's extra money more than the 331 central bank's money that is in the ecosystem. But this is because we need it at the early stage, you know, at the seed and, and the early stage level. So, it, and, I, and I think to, to, to your point, how do you convince more domestic capital to, to get involved in the asset class? I think it's very important and it's taken, we've seen it take some while. In India, it was mostly the, you know, for foreign money that had the first wave of venture capital, but now, over the last five years, we've seen a lot more domestic capital uh, in the asset class. And so it, I think that's for long-term sustained uh, you know, involvement, you need to have a strong domestic base of capital, I think, because it's a very different mindset from the, from the international capital. And I think, I think some of the family groups also realize, I, I think Egypt may have some of the similar dynamics that there's large family conglomerates that control you know, a lot of different businesses, but then they sometimes struggle to attract talent to the business. And so if, if they can do it in a, in a style that's more, you know, incubating a new business, giving a management team some equity stake in the business, then it, that's almost like, a, you know, uh, an accelerator approach. And so they can still maintain control, but they can, you know, allow new entrepreneurs to come in and a different profile of a, of a manager that they would have been able to attract before. So I think you have to help to break these molds that will help accelerate the whole ecosystem. Other questions? questions? So basically, get the word out to the ones you know in Egypt and around the region and elsewhere that there are different asset classes other than putting your money in US dollars so that it can appreciate and then not get devalued or that you can only put it in real estate as an asset class. This is the only way to think it will stand time or maybe buying uh, gold and uh, wearing it in your hands. There, there are other asset classes and angel investing and VC is, tip, is, is one. Can take things and the economy to a different direction, can generate a lot of opportunities. So there's a lot to happen out there and uh, especially VCs are good and they are standing at uh, point nine and they need uh, the p different people to push the pipeline into the way. So basically uh, individual solo angels, angel groups, everyone, I mean bigger ticket size, picking up uh, with the, uh, with the, with the, with the uh, startups until you get them off the death valley onto the VCs so that the VCs could make the most money at the end, hopefully, and everyone else, and, and, and the entrepreneur as well. And uh, finally, I think uh, that uh, uh, the stars could be aligned at some point, so it's not uh, it's not uh, it's, it's not impossible. The stars could be aligned, and the interests of the entrepreneur, the angels, and the VCs uh, could also be aligned. And the uh, government and the lawyers should also come in to make things hopefully uh, work uh, in a positive direction. And I take this opportunity to thank you, Hans, to thank you, Nicholas, and Veer for this uh, accepting to be in this controversial, uh, heated. Uh, uh, space. Thank you. Thank you.